it's nice to be out in nature and, and read a good book. I would say that Facebook Marketplace and estate sales are your new best friend, but the foam is actually the old bus seats foam. If you're on the fence, there's there's no better time than now. Hi everybody, I'm Carson. This is my husband, Brendan, and this is our school bus that still doesn't have a name, but we'd love to show you inside, so come on. So this is our kitchen, uh, as is, about six feet, but we actually added this leaf, which is quite nice, adds another foot and a half, gives us about seven and a half feet of counter space, which was uh, uh, pretty critical in us having uh, uh, our kitchen. So we've got a little built-in storage here with all the essentials. We have a knife block that uh, trying to decide on where to put our knives on a magnet or in the drawer but we didn't like any of that so uh, Carson did a DIY knife block and it's um, actually got rice in it so the rice will keep the knives nice and sharp and it uh, draws in the moisture as well so kind of keeps them clean safe and sharp so we're actually pretty excited about that little DIY trick there this comes out and to make use of everything we've got we turned it into a little serving tray with some handles we've got our uh, camp chef uh, oven we're really excited about this uh, it runs off propane two burners and an oven and uh, the oven was also a need for us um, Carson uh, has a hobby of baking so we can do cookies brownies you know uh, bake a pizza uh, we're really really happy about that uh, moving over here we've got another little leaf set in for the sink obviously have we have filtered water option and a non-filtered option uh, our sink was actually i think a previously uh, like a catering size sink it was a double sink very deep and huge uh, we just cut it in half and we we have the one and it's nice and deep which was also on our checklist uh, we didn't really like being crammed uh, in such a small sink so we're very very happy with the the size of this moving down here we've got our water filtration system that's a six stage for this and obviously the cleaning supplies and trash um, on all of our drawers uh, we have a baby locking um, system that is run on a magnet so we just magnet, opens up the baby lock, and uh, yeah, we unlock them when we're hanging out, when we're driving, we lock them, and so far uh, it's worked out really well. Uh, moving to the storage up here, Carson handmade this little, little curtain. Works out pretty well. Uh, one thing that I would uh, change about our kitchen is the depth of our shelf. Um, we went kind of small because we were worried about hitting our head when washing, but Maybe I would have uh, made a little bit bigger and, and just had that bit of sacrifice. But uh, otherwise, we're pretty happy with our kitchen. This is our living room area, and this is where the majority of our life happens. Um, so this was a really big space for us to like think about, and we put a lot of effort um, into this little corner of our bus. We have the table that drops down into an actual twin-size bed. We just swap out the, the pipe height underneath. It's not easy to do and it is not fun to do, but we didn't really build for guests. We built for us and then that option is there. If somebody wanted to stay, we could absolutely do that. And um, we even added because we didn't want to lose any wood and we have a leaf that pops out. There's U brackets underneath the table, and then we just take a one by one piece of iron or steel, and we slide it underneath to hold this leaf up. One of my favorite things, and one of my favorite money saving techniques that I did on the bus was the cushions. My mom, my grandma, and I made these all ourselves. Um, but the foam is actually the old bus seats foam. So my mom had the idea, we were getting ready to get rid of the bus seats after we threw them out to just cut into that like brownish, reddish, ugly leather and see what was underneath because foam is ridiculously expensive. And thankfully we found the foam underneath that leather was wrapped in plastic. It was in pristine condition. And so that is actually what this, um, all of our cushions are made out of. I handmade all the curtains as well. Those are drop cloths that I got at an estate sale for like 30 bucks. And I made all of our curtains off of that. And then I even had plenty left over to donate to another schoolie for, for their build.
we, we've been backpacking before. We got the travel bug and uh, you know, after backpacking, we went back to working and you know, it's you know, 40, 50 hours a week and it doesn't really feel like adventure. You feel like you're missing out a little bit on life. And so um, we just, we won't, wanted a new challenge. We'd never done something like this before. That's kind of part of the intention of why we did it is to uh, push ourselves outside the comfort, comfort zone. Never built anything in our lives. And so we pushed ourselves there and, and we've never just been self-sustaining and so uh, uh, yeah just we wanted to seek life experiences really. I also think turning 30 was like honestly a quarter life crisis that like responsibilities and kids and dogs and like the thought of owning a house it's all like looming and becoming a little bit claustrophobic and so what do you do in a situation like that? You buy a bus. Like, you just go in the complete opposite direction and you run from those responsibilities and there's so much world to see. And like turning 30 was like, oh my gosh, we need to hurry and like see what we'll, see all we can while we can. And um, yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what we're doing. All right, so this is our bathroom, shower, catch-all closet room. Um, this is a three by three space and we bought the pre-made, pre-put together shower pan, which I know a lot of people like make their own and it's very like money saving and, and budget friendly. But for us, it was a huge time, time saver just to buy the, the pre-made pan and throw it in there. And it worked for our space with the three by three. Um, the shower walls are actually not shower walls. They are bathroom floors. So they are waterproof interlocking bathroom floor, kitchen floor tile um, that I just put on with adhesive. And just to be double safe, we siliconed all the cracks. And then to be triple safe, we put a track all the way around the shower. So we have a 360 degree shower curtain. It is probably way over safe and way overdone, but we would just rather be safe than sorry in, in a build that's made primarily of wood. Um, so this track is also one of my favorite things that we found when we were building. I don't think I've seen anybody else have it, but it is like bendable hospital track. And in a space like a bus, there is no 90 degree angles. There's nothing straight or even. And so this like really bends into the space that you have. I use it on our front doors. I use it in the bedroom, on the windows as well. Um, you get a huge strand of it and you can cut it down to whatever size you need. And so I just put that around the shower. Underneath here is all the guts and the non-pretty stuff of the shower. So we have a seven gallon recirculating shower. And so the water comes out the shower head, down through the drain, and through an entire seven step sanitizing process with different filters and UV filters, and then it comes back out. So we can stand in the shower on seven gallons for 30 or 45 minutes and never have to get out, which is so nice. Um, and definitely one of our favorite things about our build because we're just not consuming water and having to fill up often. And then last but not least is our toilet. We have the porta potty toilet. It is a cassette toilet. So it's got the water and the flusher on the top and then the catcher of the waste on the bottom. Um, it's kind of an emergency purpose only um, for us. We try to refrain from using it because it does get stinky and um, it's just not exciting to clean. Um, but, you know, when you're on a budget, the $100 toilet is a lot nicer than the $1,000 composting toilet. So this was a sacrifice that we made, um, but we just try to use rest stops and stuff instead of, of really diving into to that toilet. All right, so in this hall area, we have our his and her set of drawers, which is nice when you're in such a confined space to have like your own little area. Um, so Brendan has two drawers here under the bed and I have two drawers here under the fridge. And above the drawers, we have our Norcold 412 refrigerator. And we kind of struggle with this refrigerator. We both agreed that we wanted the stand up because it's so much easier to get in, get out. You can see everything, um, but it is a major power suck to keep this thing cold. And we didn't delete the window behind it. So sometimes the sun hits that window and warms up the backside. So keeping this thing cold has been a full-time job. 
All right, so this is our bedroom. Uh, we have a full-size bed, which I love because I love to cuddle, but Brendan says he would prefer a queen-size bed. But again, it's one of those like give and take things because if we added the inches for the queen-size bed, then our living room would be smaller and our kitchen would be smaller and it was just not a, a, but we weren't willing to make that sacrifice. So we stuck with the full-size bed and I get all the cuddles. So like, I'm pretty happy. Um, when we were in the building phase, we, we're watching a lot of tiny home tours and we were making notes of what people said they loved about their build or they didn't love about their build. And one thing that we noticed was a lot of people were complaining that they didn't think about a headboard. And so we made a note of that for us that like we have to have a headboard. Um, and if you're gonna go through the trouble of putting it in, it might as well be storage, right? So um, we have a his and her headboard as well. Mine has books and like crayons and creative sewing and like a bunch of creative stuff in it. I have absolutely no idea what is in Brendan's, it's his space. So <laughs> it's uh, his whole thing over there, but like we really enjoy having that extra storage um, as well. And then another thing that we love is we made it to where our bed flips up from the inside. So if it's a rainy day outside um, and we don't wanna go outside and get wet, we can access our garage from the inside. We used another gas strut there, which is very expensive, but to keep a hundred pound bed from falling on your head while you're digging around back there, I think it's kind of a necessity. All right, so uh, this is our cabin area. Uh, we wanted to make use of every bit of space. Uh, so we built in storage to, to this overhead section here. And here we've got a lot of camera equipment and backup laundry kind of became a catch-all. We like to carry a lot of food on us um, if we're going out to BLM land. Uh, so up here we've got loads of spices. Obviously you can see our bookshelf. Uh, this is only maybe uh, an eighth of the books we actually do have, but uh, um, it's nice to be out in nature and, and read a good book. To the person watching this, I would say that Facebook Marketplace and estate sales are your new best friend. Um, we got on Facebook Marketplace every day and just searched free and um, we would just find what people had um, and use what we could from, from whatever was out there. Uh, estate sales are key um, because these are usually older people who have passed and the, it's men with garages full of tools and drill bits and paint and um, you can get a lot of things really inexpensive from there. We didn't know that for the first couple months of our build but once we stumbled upon that that was really influential for us. Um, yeah and, and free bed frame. We use free bed frame on the side of the road for so much stuff and so Definitely, definitely look into that and um, check your landfill for free paint because ours had free paint all the time. If you're on the fence, there's there's no better time than now. Um, you know, if um, the only person that's stopping you is, is you really. And you know, it's, it's very easy to uh, come up with these excuses that, oh, I don't have time. I don't, uh, you know, I need more money or, or whatever the case, but that, that they are what they are and this, it's just excuses um, you know uh, there are a lot of you know obstacles out there but I think if you work hard and you think creatively there are solutions to to overcome a lot of these obstacles so um, yeah no matter age no matter what where when just just do it you know you're only uh, you're only getting older and time keeps passing and uh, what better time than now All right, so talking about the outside, uh, if we shut these doors here, uh, on the inside, we I forget what they're called, but there's like a dog leash like uh, hook and it pulls the doors in to lock from the inside. Uh, but on the outside, uh, we have this little padlock set up and that shuts there, put the padlock on. Uh, it's our little security system. Here's the where the original truck batteries sit that powers and starts the engine and there was nothing here before uh, it was just an empty space so we decided to build a box and uh, put our propane tank there so uh, in here um, I built this box out of angle iron the the 
3D uh, outline bones of it uh, as angle iron and actually a, a great way for to get angle iron is a bed frame and everybody wants to just kind of discard bed frame freely uh, you see it sitting on the curb uh, just for trash all the time so uh, yeah that's still good anger iron we used it got a nice little solid box for our propane tank uh, we got some backup oil and transmission fluid um, and there's actually another door over here that pops down and it's a storage above this battery box that runs from here to here. And it's got jumper cables and uh, backup propane supplies and just another great usage of uh, that empty space there. Going up, we've got this little pop-up table. It's not too big, but it's uh, nice for a laptop or drinks or whatever. So. This is actually an emergency window. And so the entire, uh, both panels open up and we put a USB and 120 volt outlet as well on the outside. So if we're just hanging out, then we can plug in and have power outside. This is where all of our electric lives. Uh, obviously you can see we've got a little extra shoe storage, trying to make use of every bit of space. But uh, opening up in here, uh, we've got four 100 amp hour lithium batteries. So we've got 400 amp hours uh, for solar on top. We've got three 210 watt solar panels. So we've got uh, 630 watts on top. Uh, we've got a 2000 watt inverter. We've got two 12 volt fuse panels. We've got one for lights and outlets, another one for accessories. Um, this little hub here, we've actually got uh, from Renogy, it's a MPPT, uh, also a DC to DC charger. So that's an all-in-one. It's been really nice, really convenient. And um, yeah, it's worked really well. Uh, over here, we've got our 120 volt breaker box, driver outlets, water heater, fridge, UV filter. And then we've got this Samlex power that uh, is our shore power. Open up here, this is our garage area. <laughs> uh, it, it's a garage area, you know, it's, uh, we, we've actually got our, our spare tire back here because it was a bit of an after, afterthought. Um, we don't have any hitches, so it was not easy for us to attach it. Uh, so that's living back there right now. Uh, we've got backup water, uh, our pile of books that we've been uh, reading. When we're finished, we throw it back here. Collapsible ladder, which is really handy getting on the roof. Extends to 10 feet, collapses down to like three feet. Really, really cool. Uh, but one thing I really like that we have back here is this pull out, uh, retractable for uh, clothes, a clothesline. Uh, we, we wash our clothes and then wrap this around a tree and uh, we've got a built-in clothesline there that just tucks away. So yeah, it's not a whole lot uh, of storage, but it's enough for us. So we're pretty happy with it. Up front here, we got a, a bike rack. It's actually originally intended for a car trunk. Uh, we tried to put it on the back, didn't exactly work for our bus. Uh, so we put it on the front here. Um, actually works pretty solid. Uh, everything, uh, it doesn't sway in the wind or on the highway at all. Really pretty happy with it. Uh, it's only a bit inconvenient because uh, trying to get everything off to check all the fluids uh, of the engine is kind of a pain. And so we actually avoid that, which is probably not the best thing. It would be nice to have better access uh, to check everything. So in the future, um, we'd like to add a hitch on the front and back so we can put our spare tire on the front or back and our bikes on the front or back. Um, but otherwise, this uh, budget-friendly setup is working for us, so. It's pretty funny because if you know anything about like the Myers-Briggs, um, it's a personality test that's four letters. And there's only two options for each letter. We're the complete opposite. He is introverted, I am extroverted. He is a planner, I am spontaneous. So it takes a lot of communication for, for us to work, but it also brings out the best in both of us. Um, 
and living in such a small space, I mean, you kind of have to be best friends. We do absolutely everything together. We cook together, we eat together, we go on walks together. We, there's not much time spent apart living here, which is a blessing and a curse, I guess, however you look at it. But um, honestly, we're, we're having the best time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, I think being in such a tight space, uh, it's going to force your relationship to do one of two things. It's either going to, you know, pry you apart and it's, it's going to send you in separate directions. Uh, I think that can often be the easy choice, um, but it could also bring you much closer together. Um, uh, but it does require a lot of work. I mean, I think that is also the best worst part is that when you're, you know, out in the middle of nowhere in this tight space uh, and you have a disagreement, you get, you're forced to figure it out. I mean, you know, and, and that's the best worst part is like, all right, well, we're not going anywhere soon. Uh, we are in this situation. And so let's Let's communicate, and um, I think being forced, you know, to to work things out, uh, we we find a solution. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we we love each other and we want the best for each other. And so, uh, yeah, just communicate and listen. Where is the future taking us? We honestly don't even know where we're going to be tomorrow. We're just kind of going wherever the wheels take us for as long as they'll take us, and uh, having a good time doing it. Yeah, I mean, just adventure, really. That, that's, that's the future. Uh, no matter how old we get, uh, we never want to stop living and exploring and adventuring. So wherever that takes us, we're ready for it. Yeah, so honestly, if you've stuck around this long and you've watched this far, thanks so much for watching our build and coming into our little tiny home with us. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see more, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at The Flyway Effect. Um, we'd love to chat with you about your build and good luck.